Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Several weeks ago, I did my first video on Radiant Photo, and in that video, I mentioned that I'd do another video demonstrating how you could edit a portrait in Radiant Photo. I'd like to apologize for taking so long to get to this video. As many of you know, I've been working on new Lightroom training, and that's been taking up a lot of my time. I hope to have that available for pre-sale next week. Also, I moved my newsletter over to Substack, and I totally redid the newsletter, and I'm actually publishing two newsletters a week instead of one, along with a podcast. That is doing very well. If you're interested in my newsletter, I'll have information about that in the description below this video. Now, Radiant Photo and Portraits. It has all that AI technology built in, you know, those buzz letters, I'll call them AI, uh, where it will automatically know where the person's eyes are, their teeth are, and so on. And you're able to very easily edit a portrait with just simple movements of sliders. That's what we're going to be doing now. Now I have Radiant Photo open. I'm just going to click right here and open up a portrait that I have on my desktop. And what it will do is it will do some editing right off the, you know, right off out of the gate, I should say. Um, I have it in quick edit mode. And if we go over here and if I move this before after slider, there's before and there's after. So you could see it's rather subtle, but it did a nice job. It cleaned up um, blemishes and it uh, lessened the darkness under her eyes and it enhanced her eyes slightly. So it looks pretty good. Now, when you're in quick edit mode, you have limited controls. So over here on the right-hand side, we don't have our full complement of sliders. That's why I think most of us would probably prefer to do a detailed edit. So I'm going to jump over to detailed edit. I'll move this before after slider over to the far left. You can see that it did some editing to the image already. And automatically it determined that it should do some tone adjustments to the entire image, color adjustments, some detail adjustments, and so on. But that really isn't specific to the portrait. To get specific to the actual person, what you need to do is click on this little tab right here. It's a little icon of a person. When you do that, you'll notice that it has face selection and it found the person's face automatically. Uh, while I was experimenting with this uh, application, I loaded uh, several different portraits in it and a lot of portraits with, that had a single image with multiple people in the image. And it seemed to always reliably find the person or persons in the image. If by chance it doesn't find the person, you could manly add, manually add a face. As I mentioned, I didn't have to do that. Or if you start doing adjustments and you think it's adjusting one eye and not the other eye, let's say, you can click this little checkbox and you'll get these, um, these little control points that you could move around so that you could better center everything over each part of the person's face so the adjustments are done properly. Now, in this case, we don't need to do that, so I'll turn that off. Now, looking at the controls here, there's actually four different sections, eyes, face, skin, and makeup, and automatically it did some adjustments to her eyes and to her skin. Didn't do any face or makeup adjustments at all. Let's drill down on this a little bit. We'll open up eyes. And if there was red eye, uh, you could eliminate it by clicking this box. In this case, of course, we don't have that. We could enhance, enhance her eyes. Just move this slider to the right. It will enhance her irises, and it will whiten the white part of her eye. And it does take a second to render, I noticed. You could see that. It also affects the skin around her eye. So let's go down. That's like zero, no adjustment at all. And then all the way up. And you could see it very easy to over-adjust. So we'll leave it around the default position it gave us, which was, I believe, 25. Then we could enlarge her eyes. Um, I mentioned many times when I've done videos on editing portraits that many photographers like to just enlarge eyes slightly, or uh, if whatever focal length lens they're using and the way they're, the face is like turned, one eye may look substantially larger than the other eye, and they'll want to enlarge one of the eyes so they look more equal. In this case, you can't uh, affect the size of each eye individually, just together. So if you want to enlarge the eyes, you would go to eye enlarge. 
and let's say I'll just do it real quick. I'll move it for our right see <laughs> it's not, it's really kind of a crazy adjustment. So we'll leave that off in this case. We don't need to enlarge her eyes. Her eyes are fine the way they are. They look great. Dark circles, these are lines under her eyes. And we'll move it to the far right just so you can see what it does. Again, it takes a second to render. See how it smooths out the lines and removes the dark circles. In that case, I think that didn't look really natural. So I'm going to leave a little bit of it there. Uh, catch lights, you could add catch lights to a person's eyes. She already has catch lights in her eyes, as you could see. But if you wanted to, you would turn this on and let's just max it out. And it does take a second to render. You can see there's like an out, an outdoor kind of glow from the sky. You could have a beauty dish look. And again, takes a second to render. It's not very bright either, even at maximum. There's a softbox look. That's dual softboxes, as you could see. Uh, there's a ring light. You could see that. And there is a Rembrandt. Or an umbrella light, I'm sorry, not Rembrandt. Um, in my opinion, these catch lights don't look natural to me uh, at all. Now, this kind of looks odd because she has catch lights in her eyes already. I think what would make them look more natural is if they were a little more sharp, because you can see that in the case of this umbrella, it's a little blurry. Also, they're not bright enough uh, because catch lights typically are very bright. So I don't think that is, um, I don't think that's as good as it could be. So I'm going to turn that off. So those are the eye adjustments. Let's move down to face adjustments. And this is something you may or may not want to do. Uh, face contouring is making her face thinner or wider. Uh, like we'll click that on and let's just move it to the extreme right. Takes a second to render and you can see what it did. Move it to the extreme left. You can see what it did. We'll turn it off totally. And that's it. That's all it is. Uh, there's uh, teeth whitening, which we might want to do. And again, I'll just move it to the extreme right so you can see the kind of the range of the slider. And you can see it gave her really <laughs> two white teeth. And so you can move this along. Just get the brightness of the teeth so it looks natural. I think that might be it. Maybe just down a little bit. Lip sharpening. Turn that on. It does take a second to render. You can see it sharpen. It over sharpened them here at this 50%. Uh, uh, number. You can see they're over sharp. Look like her lips are chat. Bring that down just a touch. Let it render. It still looks over sharpened to me. That, that slider too I think probably should be reworked. At least on this image it doesn't look right so I'm going to turn that off. Now of course, right, let me turn that back on. I didn't really. We have fine. Let me max it out too. We have fine sharpening. We have medium sharpening. And we have coarse sharpening. And you can see that they all look horrible when you're at 100. Let's move it down to a more reasonable number like 13. And there's medium. That was coarse. There's medium. And there's fine. So, I don't know. We'll leave it on fine and leave it around 29. So that, uh, those are the controls in the face section. Let's move to the skin section. And here we could smooth their skin. Uh, we'll turn that off just so you, it did add some skin smoothing automatically but we could smooth it way out, turn that up like that, and you could see that it's all blurred out. Keep it more natural, leave that lower. Do you want to smooth the face only or the full body? So this would include her neck area down here. If I go to full body, smoothing type, subtle, default, or super smooth. Probably use super smooth if you're doing some type of ad. For makeup or something like that. You can see the difference between that and subtle and default in the middle. I think we'll stay with subtle on this image. Uh, blemish removal. Let's see if it, it helps eliminate blemishes. There is a slider there too so if it there's a stubborn blemish that it just won't remove, move that to the right. We have infrared removal. Now I've tried, I've messed around with this on several images and I haven't really seen it do anything. So if I keep it all the way down to zero, okay, that's what it looks like. If I move it all the way up and wait, it kind of just recolors it a little bit, I guess, but it, you can see just some subtle stuff in around her nose and cheek area right in here, maybe her chin a tiny bit. I'm going to put it all the way up now. 
we did render and you could see maybe her lips. So it's like, just affects the reds a little bit. Um, shine removal. There is some shine on her face and her cheeks, her forehead and her cheeks. Move that to the extreme right. You can see it eliminated it. It doesn't look good. So we need a little shine there. And that is our, those are the adjustments in the skin section. And finally, we have this makeup section and we could do skin toning for the face only or for the full body. And we'll max that out. See, that looks horrible. We could bring it all the way down. And that's before. And that's after. So don't like that. Um, although that's the foundation we used, I should. Let me put that up. And we could click here and choose a different foundation. Let's give her a tan. It might look better. That, that doesn't look good, does it? <laughs> we'll turn it down a little bit. So she went to the tanning booth and is risking cancer. But we'll turn that off because I don't like that. But, I, but you could choose one of these presets in here as I chose the tan one. Or you could um, go here and individually adjust the hue. You can see how the hue is changing. The saturation. And the brightness. Again, you have to give it a second to render. So that's skin tony. Below that we have blush. Let's add some blush. You could get a base here. Let's just click a base that's going to be obvious to see. You can see how it's adding this blush to this area here. Of course, we're never, you wouldn't pick that color, right? You'd pick something like this. Something more like that. I'll leave that on. You could affect the hue, saturation, and brightness of that as well. And that's pretty much it. Now, I totally over-processed this image. There's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. But that gives you an idea of what you could do with portraits in Radiant Photo. Some very powerful tools. Uh, it takes a little while to render. That's one thing I noticed. Uh, sometimes you move a slider and you have to wait, you know, a couple beats for it to kick in. Uh, so hopefully that improves. Of course, that's something that would vary from computer to computer. My computer is pretty fast. So if you have a slower, older machine, you may be waiting quite a bit for those uh, adjustments to kick in. Also, uh, some of the sharpening, like the sharpening of the lips, I didn't think that looked realistic. Uh, sometimes when you're affecting, enhancing the eyes, it just looked bad. Um, you have to be very careful and not overdo it. Um, I would prefer if with the eye adjustments that you could edit the iris of the eye independent of the sclera of the eye, that's the white part of the eye, and those independent of, let's say, the eyelashes and stuff because you notice when I move that eye enhanced to the right not only did it affect inside the eye it affected around the eye and affected her eyebrows as well so I'd like to see that refined a little bit more have individual sliders for those individual parts of the eye so that you could better um, adjust them because you may have really white uh, scleras of the eye already but especially persons with brown eyes. The brown eyes usually tend to be dark and you want to just brighten the iris up and you're not really able to do that. So I'd like to see that split up. But other than those uh, quibbles, I think it's pretty good. It works pretty well. And that's it. That's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.